Hi, my name's Steam Boy, and I make pixel art. I've been making these pixel portraits, and I've been getting a lot of questions on my process. So I recorded the entire thing for my uh, latest uh, Elon Musk portrait, and I thought you, I'd walk you guys through it. Um, this first video is going to go through everything up until uh, just right before the brain starts to transform. So check it out, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments. So with all of these, I'd like to start with uh, nailing the portrait of the head first. So um, when I do pixel art, um, when I'm making these portraits, I like to work at uh, 128 and then scale it up 400% to 512 by 512. So here I'm just going to scale down my canvas to 128. That way the pixels, you know, you can see the actual pixels. I like that more low res quality. Otherwise, you know, it just looks like normal line art. Um, so I'm going to start here. I got my reference of Elon Musk. So I'm just going to start sketching away with uh, one pixel brush. It's a uh, the pencil tool. Uh, you want to make sure you have the pencil tool selected and not the paintbrush. That way you can get the super crisp um, one pixel uh, width brush. Some people like to sketch first in you know a high resolution, scale it down, but I find like just going straight uh, in with one pixel brush helps me. It gets a more predictable sketch, and you know it's not you don't get all those extra uh, anti-alias pixels that you have to work around. Um, once I have my sketch done, I put that on a lower opacity layer and do another one on top. And this time, um, to get the super clean lines, sometimes I'll use the, sh the hold the shift button uh, to do my lines. Uh, you get super straight lines that way, but what I'm really using it for is so that I don't have like um, the extra, like the two pixel kind of width brush stroke. Um, when, you use a, when you use the pencil tool in Photoshop and you freehand it, a lot of times when you're doing curves and such, you'll get two pixels instead of the one perfect pixel. Um, there's probably other programs out there who that, that'll, uh, that don't have that issue, but with Photoshop, to, to, to not have that issue, like, I'll like to, I like to use the, the shift button and just get those, those nice clean one pixel width lines. So here's the final line art, um, and man, I look back at this and it looks nothing like Elon Musk. Um, but I think what what I decided was I'll just kind of like fix it as I go um, once I start the color phase. So what I did was um, you'll notice I blocked in you know all the flat colors, and now I'm just going in there and doing like it's like basically cell shading. Um, it's kind of the process that I've been used to, not even in pixel art, but even before doing comics, doing um, you know anime style illustrations, basically just doing cell shading, but at a pixel resolution. When I'm doing the skin tones, I think I use about maybe like six or seven different colors for the skin, and generally maybe like three to five for for the other areas. Um, you know, you don't want to have too many shades, otherwise um, it won't have that kind of um, pixel art low res look. Um, but you don't want to use too few because then you won't get the you know you won't have a as much control over your shading. So skipping a little ahead now, this is pretty close here, just adding some final details on the side of his face, just to try to get that likeness just as close as I can. So I'm pretty happy with it at this point, um, so we're going to move on to the next step. So next was the Robo Skull. Um, so just to go through a little bit of my, about my thinking process, like as soon as I decided, like, hey, I'm gonna do Elon Musk, it's a cool idea. Um, I had all these images in my head of, of what I could do, and I think it really started with like, oh, it'd be crazy if his head just opened up and he was like an android or like a cyborg. Um, you know, obviously like huge fan of Ghost in the Shell and that kind of cyber cyberpunk aesthetic of all of you know the, the Robo skulls and the open faces. So definitely wanted to chase that for this one. Um, for the skull here, I'm basically, at this point, I got my reference of a human skull off on my other monitor. And I'm just, um, you know, trying my best to, to map it to Elon's face here. Um, you know, with his uh, pixel face on a, a lower opacity. So just roughing out where the skull would be based on his face. And then once I like that, you know, double check to make sure it's accurate. 
Um, I'll do the same thing. I'll put the uh, skull on a lower opacity layer, and then I'll do my clean line art on top using the one pixel brush. And here's where I start making decisions on like, okay, um, I know what the skull shape is now, and I want to you know make it more of like a cybernetic skull. So as I'm as I'm going here, I'm just like thinking about different places where I can put panel lines, um, you know, different panel cuts and uh, the little little plate there for the, the ear cavity, whatever you call it. Um, and there it is. There's the final um, final liner for the skull and just double checking here to make sure, mostly to make sure the eye holes line up. Um, and it looks like um, the, the eye sockets are lining up with the teeth are a little off, so I think I'm just going to lower them here a little bit to line them up with his mouth, even though, like, I don't, I never really opened his mouth, so it, it I, I don't even know why I did this. At the, at the time, I didn't, I didn't know what I was going to do with the open, uh, uh, opening the face, so I was like, okay, so make sure everything lines up. Um, then I started doing the eyeballs. Uh, at first, I was going to even have, like, his pupils on the eyeballs, but it looked way too creepy. I don't know if it's going to show up here in a sec, but yeah, it just looked it looked really creepy and silly. So um, if, if you guys look closely when the skull opens, the, fir the, the, the face panel opens the first time, um, it actually uh, hides the, the pupils. So here, just dropping in the flat colors for the skull. Um, I'm thinking like, you know, like, uh, dark metals and shiny kind of apple plastic materials just trying to get that sleek uh, Tesla vibe um, so I'm just shading here and getting the different uh, material responses um, you know shiny on the on the white material and then a little bit more metallic on the darker grays Just putting some finishing touches here, adding some final details, um, some contact shadows, but that's pretty much the skull. So the next thing I did was I started to cut up his face to determine where his, where the panel lines would be, um, since he's a cyborg and his face is going to open up. So I use a selection tool here, and I have you know the face on one layer, the skull underneath. And I'm just going to start making cuts. Um, and, you know, uh, I did the top face panel. That's a very classic piece that I've decided to roll up over his, the top of his head. And then on the, for the rest of it, just kind of breaking it into smaller chunks and then making sure, you know, uh, there's, there's some overlap, you know, so for this, this chin piece, wanted to make sure it looked like, you know, the cheek piece when it moves out from it, there was still some. Uh, you know, some some uh, more of like a an overlap area, like an inset area, um, just to give it more sense of depth when when things are overlapping and opening. Um, once you cut the pieces, you kind of have to go in and make sure all the outlines line up, um, making sure when it overlaps, it's it, you know you don't see the lines, but then as soon as you open it, I'll switch a frame to the the version of the face panel that has the outlines. And, and the back faces to make sure you know that, that transition feels nice. So now I have pretty much all my pieces cut out. Um, it's not fully cleaned up, but I think I start doing that later when I actually animate pieces rotating and such. Um, for now, I think I'm, I'm going to move on to cutting up the uh, sections of the skull. So I decided that not only am I going to have Elon's face open up, but I want to reveal his, you know, mechanical brain. So I also need to solve how I'm going to have the skull open up. So break that down into several pieces, much like I did with his face. Um, at this point, I haven't really decided how it's going to open up, but I'm going to move on to making the brain next. With the brain, I'm pretty much just taking some reference, looking at some reference for human brains. Um, and I, I, at this point, I already knew that I wanted it to transform into a Cybertruck, but, you know, the human brain is a very organic, very smooth, uh, you know, organ. 
uh, and the Cybertruck is very angular. So I was kind of like a little bit nervous about how I was going to transform it. But I didn't think too much about it. I just wanted to go with the, the organic shapes. And I figured like I could do some kind of fudgery once I rotated pieces around for transformation. So here I just want to make a simple uh, mechanical brain shape. Uh, throwing in details, um, but not, you know, it's, it's pretty simple. I wanted to get enough panel cuts in there so that I have pieces to to move around on the transform. So I'm pretty happy with how the brain turned out. Um, I've got my three basic pieces now. I've got the skull, the face, and the brain, and it's time to move on to the next step. So I've got my three layers now. Um, I put them on... Uh, five basic frames on my Photoshop animation timeline, just so I can have a sense of how the layers are gonna work. The skull, the, the face isn't actually gonna open this way, um, it's just an exploded view for, for quick reference. What I actually wanna do is have that main face plate rotate up and over his, the top of his skull. So what I did was, um, you don't see it here, but you know I took a couple pictures of my own face just to get the angle just right. Um, I'm not too worried about likeness at this point because you know the movement's very fast and you're not really going to tell whether it, it looks like Elon Musk or not because um, it's just a small piece of that face. So again, you know, going in with that one pixel brush, getting my pixel line art done, and then filling it in with the flat colors. Once I had that first panel, um, I decided to start moving the other pieces around. So this is the back of, back of the head piece, making sure that you know, you have that overlapping area. Um, I move the ear here. Um, and here's a here's a neat trick that I use a lot um, when making these portraits. And that's just using the warp tool on, you know, already completed pieces uh, for animation. Uh, that gets you a, a really quick, it's a really quick way to move really detailed pieces. And you can move it, you know, a couple degrees and you can kind of fudge it. Um, you know, here I'm doing it with the, with the cheek panel, but Usually when, you, when you're morphing um, pixel art, you'll get a lot of distortion in your pixel art and you'll need to clean that up. So you can see after I you know, warp each one of these, I go back in and clean it up. Um, and it only really works for a couple degrees of rotation, anything more than that, and you'll have to draw a new keyframe. So here I'm happy with the amount of rotation of each of these pieces. So I'm gonna go in and just make sure um, the inside piece, the inside areas are filled in. Um, I changed, uh, or I, I made the inside a bright red. Um, so I think at that point I darkened the background color to, so that, you know, the, the inside surfaces would pop a little bit more when the face opens. So now it's time to do some in-betweens. Um, what I do here is just the one in between, um, 50, like right halfway in between the fully open pose and the fully closed. After that, I'll use the warp tool to get the you know the the the, the in betweens that are closer to each of the keyframes. So just going through here, sketching it out. I got my uh, smaller version of the the file on the right or on the left for reference, um, and also for color picking. So I got that sketched out. Check it in my timeline just to make sure it's flowing correctly. Um, and then now I'm starting to warp my keyframes to get uh, some of the in-betweens that go like right before and right after the first and last frames. So once that's feeling pretty good, I went back uh, just to make sure I get all the details inside um, of all the pieces to make sure when things open up, I'm not, uh, everything has an outline around it. So adding the outlines here. One of the tools I use a lot in Photoshop is the stroke command. And if you use the stroke command a lot, you, you'll know that like in, in pixel art, when you stroke on the outside, it always adds the two pixels, even if you set it at one pixel. So if you stroke inside, it just gives you one pixel. So here I'm just gonna finish up the main panel of the face with the outline. So I've got my basic pieces in now. I got my basic animation, um, that one click and then open. So I'm ready to go in and clean up some of these uh, face panels and render them. 
So again, I have like another version, um, another instance of my uh, image on the left, just to color pick the shading on the face. And I'm just gonna go through and quickly um, clean up the line art here and then shade the face. So once I have that pretty much done, decided to test out some of the animation here. And I made the decision of you know retracting the eyeballs. I, I really didn't like the look of the thing, uh, the look of the skull with the eyeballs in it. So I wanted to retract those to get the empty sockets. Um, so here is where you see kind of um, the, the, as the top face fades over the eyeballs, it kind of, you kind of lose the irises and pupils. Um, so just going in, rendering the uh, the last frame here. So those warped in-betweens I had earlier, I'm going to re-warp my final keyframe um, to match and then clean it up after that. Here's the warp, and you gotta clean it up. So here I think I have most of the frames cleaned up at this point, and that's the, the final opening of the face panels. So one thing that stands out immediately to me is not having any cast shadows or shadows at all over that skull as the panels are opening up. So I wanted to make sure I had at least a shadow coming off of that main face plate because um, it overlaps so much with the skull. So here I'm just going in at every frame and just, I have like a layer, I think it's on multiply or it's on like a lower opacity. And I'm just going in and filling in the shadows. So that's feeling a lot better to me. So next up is the robot arms. So right off the bat, I kind of knew I wanted to take inspiration from you know, the Tesla factory, if you've seen pictures of it, it's all white with like the red robot arms. It's got a really stark, uh, cool sci-fi, clean, sleek vibe to it. Um, I didn't want to have the white background on this one because I like having the colored background color. So I kind of flipped it and I decided to have the white mechanical arms over the red background, still giving you that Tesla factory vibe. Um, so I just kind of blocked out all of the, just, just kind of sketching out all of the arms that I want to have. And then um, just going in and doing one horizontal kind of clean version that I'm going to base all of the other arms off of. So I have each segment of these arms on a different layer so that I can move them independently. I decided for the top panel here, I use a slightly different contact piece to grab the face. Um, this one's based off of, if you've seen videos of the Tesla factory, they have a they have an arm that applies the the outer shell of the car and it holds like a giant piece and it's like this flat hand looking thing so this is inspired from that and I start to duplicate these uh, these horizontal arms for all the side pieces line them up and then I duplicate the some of them for, for the bottom jaw and then I realized for the back of his skull I wanted something a little bit different um, more 45 degrees, so just modifying some of these arms to look good in 45 degrees. And I'm going to line it up to the back of the skull. So next, um, I start to set the, the frames for the animation. So here I'm, gonna, I'm starting with the top panel, and with every frame I'm just kind of incrementally moving it up a few more pixels um, until it's off screen. So here you can see it in action. 
feels pretty good. So I do the same thing to the bottom jaw, top and bottom. And then I apply that same philosophy for the other um, panels on the face as well. So here I'm just setting all the keyframes, uh, setting all the frames, making sure it's all moving properly. And I realized I wanted to have a little bit more detail on that uh, inside of the back of the skull piece. So there it is, all the pieces moving out. So then I just clean up a couple things and here's a look at how the animation turned out. The next thing I wanted to do was open the skull up because I need to reveal the brain. So I've already decided I'm gonna use the same arms, um, robot arms to remove the skull pieces. But that little red element on his forehead, um, I wanted to actually have some articulation there and have it kind of click almost like it's like an unlock thing that uh, unlatches. So I'm just going in, drawing a couple frames for the rotation of that little latch. And then I start to set the frames on the animation for the skull pieces. And once I like where that's going, uh, I start to duplicate some of the layers from um, some of the robot arm layers. And this is where it gets really kind of unwieldy, um, you know, staying in Photoshop. Usually um, for more complex animations, I would have moved into After Effects by now. But I'm trying to keep this whole sequence in Photoshop just to, um, just to keep it um, a clean file. So I realized I wanted something a little bit different on that front forehead piece or that front face plate. Um, this one's, uh, ro this robot arm's a little bit more in perspective just to give the whole thing more of a sense of depth because this thing's going to be coming diagonally at you and to the left. So just making a, a 3D version of that. And I'm thinking to myself here that I want to make, you know, the, the, this arm kind of bend at the joints and it'd be so cool if you can actually see the articulation happen. But how it turned out was there wasn't enough time. By the time the, the arm moved out of frame, you know, you don't really get to see much of the, the actual joints bending. So if you, if you pay close attention, there's like maybe two frames of it happen here. You can, you can see me working on it here but um, you don't really notice it. So here I'm just animating some of the final pieces out. I'm gonna assign robot arms to those two. And here's a look at pretty much getting close to the end here. And here's a look at how that whole sequence turned out. And that's gonna be it for this first video. Um, on the next one, I'm gonna talk about the Cybertruck and how it transformed the brain. Um, so stay tuned for that. And if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. Thanks, everyone.